Hey YouTubers, this is Rob Moffitt. Real quick video, um, kind of different video. You know most of my videos are about how to uh, make things or save money. Uh, one of the people I watch and uh, their their videos on YouTube, he posted a video of uh, some water pollution in a local stream in his area. It was being done by a rock quarry. And the people that he reported to said it was just an optical illusion. It was like a figment of his imagination that the water that coming down the stream was all cloudy, where before it had been all clear. And it kind of made him mad enough to post a video, and it made me kind of mad too. Uh, and I started thinking what people can do about when they see things like this. And I realized there really are a lot of things people can do. They're not always effective or conclusive, but at least you can try. Um, people, they're they're instances out there where people have reported pollution and they've made over a million dollars and uh, different ways different areas uh, let me just give you a quick some quick examples here's some examples of people who are whistleblowers on ships at sea and they have made over a million dollars at some a little less but uh, anytime you can make a million dollars alright there was uh, let's see it was uh, August 6 2004 there was second engineer on, on the ship I think it was called the Carteret or excuse me it was, uh, what was it called? It was called, it was a motor tanker Guadalupe. It came into Carter at New Jersey. And uh, the second engineer was uh, was told to, to, to illegally discharge oil overseas in, in the water uh, off the ship. He, when, he, when he went to shore in New Jersey, he went to the uh, police department and made a report. This eventually went to court. He was re uh, rewarded $2.2 million. A, a, they passed some laws back in the... Uh, of the 1980s, uh, it's very stiff fines uh, for people to put plastic and oil into the water. And the neat thing about it is you can recover half the fines as a citizen for reporting. And But, but there's been many more, like this was 2004. 2006, we had four people on a ship. They were awarded two and a half million dollars. They were, had been ordered to put uh, garbage and plastic over, over the side, also pump oil overboard. Um, Let's see. What's let's see. One of the latest ones. Uh, this December thirteenth, two thousand eleven. There was one person. He was a whistleblower. He got three hundred fifty thousand dollars. The uh, on the ship he was working on, they didn't have an accurate oil record book, and they were putting uh, oil overseas illegally inside the waters where they weren't supposed to. Um, now, these people happen to work on ships, but there's a lot of fines have been given to people who didn't work on ship. In fact, one of the first ones under this law, I think his name, I think his name is Bingham. He and his wife, his, they were on a, a vacation, honeymooners, they videotaped garbage bags being thrown out overboard off the stern for like 40 minutes. Tons and tons of garbage. And he filmed it on his video camera. And he went to shore when he got back and to the Coast Guard and went to court and I think he got over a quarter of a million dollars. Also, this has happened a couple times, I think, in Alaska with cruise ships. So if you're on ships, it doesn't have to be a cruise ship. It could be a military vessel. It could be any, any seagoing vessel. I think there's like 80,000 seagoing vessels all over the world right now. So if you're inside the U.S. waters, uh, you can get fined for doing this. In fact, you're not allowed to throw the plastic anywhere at sea you get half the fine. Well, now, this is for ships at sea. Well, like my friend was putting a video on about a stream here on land. What are you going to do about that? Well, there is something I think a lot of people have forgotten about. Back in the 70s, there was a book called How to Stop Corporate Polluters and Make Money Doing It by William H. Brown. It was a really great book. Um, and he discovered, or he, he wrote about how people had rediscovered there was a law passed in 1899. It was a Refuse Act. Um, and it said you weren't allowed to um, put anything in the water. And it was very difficult for people to get out of this law because it was so specific. And um, it was passed in 1899, and almost no one was obeying it. So just about anyone who was putting stuff in, in the water here in, in the rivers and streams. Now, it didn't have to be uh, a big river. It had to be a navigable waterway, but could also be a tributary leading up to a waterway. And he found out by taking this to court, you had to take the the case to the district, the U.S. attorney, but they were required by law to prosecute. Like I said, this book, How to Stop the Corporate Polluters and Make Money Doing It, uh, you can get half the fines uh, levied against polluters, and there's really no way around it. 
the, 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 the polluters had to go ahead and get permits in order for them to keep doing any pollution. And in a lot of cases, the permits were very restrictive. So it was a good law. And there, there has been some ways people have found to get around it, mostly by failing to enforce it, depending on the administration, uh, the specific uh, district attorney that is there at the time whether or not they want to pursue their refuse act claims. But it's a very, very strong law. It's very rarely used, and hardly anybody knows about it. And like I said, all the fines that are levied, once they are uh, found legal and the, and the verdict is is given you're able to get half the money so it's it's a very good law it's let me see if I have the court case yeah the refuse act it's still viable and it's it can be found in the United States code uh, 33 United States code section 407 and if you get that book I told you about the the how to stop corporate polluters make money doing it it goes into detail uh, uh, about the the, uh, the law, about how to gather evidence, how to present it to the attorneys, and how to p sort of m help them along the way to <laughs> making sure it's enforced. Um, this is something I don't think too many people know about, and like I said, there there could be some changes to ways that people can get out of obeying this law, but the law has never been rescinded; it's still on the books, so. Uh, that law and the the particular laws about uh, throwing stuff overboard, plastic and oil, um, those are very good laws also, and you can get half the money. So check them out. If you see some pollution, if it's at sea on ships, go to the Coast Guard. If it's here on land in rivers and streams, get that book, gather some evidence, and see if you can't go to the attorneys. You might get half the money. Or you will get half the money if it's prosecuted and found guilty. Thanks for watching my video, everybody. I have new videos every week, and they're almost always on how to save money, how to do things for fun, and sometimes little different videos like this one. Hope you come back and subscribe. And if you have a second, take a time, some little time to to look at some of the stuff I have for sale on eBay, or or maybe some of the books or videos that I've made and have for sale on Amazon. You can find them under my name, Rob Moffat. I think you'll enjoy them. I know you'll enjoy them. <laughs> right, take care, everybody, and see you later.